today's video is sort of a remake of one I did on Labor Day of 2022. That video was a lot shorter, and this has all the clips that I recorded that day, and has very little editing. In this video I cover a lot of things, mostly leak detecting, leak searching, microscopic little leaks, big leaks, go over um, how inaccurate the liquid line level reading on a Danfoss controller can be compared to what it really is. So if you're interested, I hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm in the grocery store. I've got uh, some issues going on here. The store's cool. They got elevators. All right, so we got a few things going on here. We've got an end cap freezer not working. There it is. We got it empty. It is A4. at 68 degrees. I can't open it right now because there's chips are here. And A7 as well. They haven't emptied this one yet, but they need to. Ice cream is soft. And then we make our way to the back. Also got walk-in freezer. But it's not holding temp. And according to the manager, a high pressure alarm on rack C. Racks are up there. And then we got the bakery freezer up here. Again. And you can hear refrigerant flowing. Close the door real quick. You can hear the flow, but it's not cold enough to turn the fans on. These fans have a uh, fan delay, temperature delay switch. If they don't get cold enough, it won't turn the fans on. So these fans will shut off. Um, and then you can hear it's like it's vapor going through the coil when you can hear it like that That means it's vapor and really not liquid or at least that's what I've noticed over the years So we need to go check out the rack rack a okay, so refrigerant being low you can hear it like that That means we're gonna have to leak search. So come get my h10 got my Gallon and my bottle. All right, so I'm up here at the computer where the racks are on rack a Got alarms, active alarms. A7, A3, and A4. 21.1 for A7, which is the one up front. And now we've also got the seven door A3A going off. It's at 30.8, and then we've got uh, A4, which is the one in the front. A7 is in the back, the one that has ice cream in it. We need to empty. A4 is up front. I think, I might be wrong, I don't know. Anyways, that's what we got. 70.4, that's the one up front, A4. Then we go into our cleared alarms, which is, uh, let's see. Go into your alarm settings. It's your main menu, you go to alarms. You can find the active alarms, cleared alarms. This is the walk, no, that's not the walk-in. Uh, A11, that's also a reach-in nine degrees so this rack rack a lost refrigerant again apparently on friday we had a guy come out and add refrigerant apparently he didn't find the leak or the only leak so we gotta leak check this rack before we just fix it look at the computer you go to refrigeration rack a let's see we go to the evaporators we can try to figure out what a9 is the walk-in 48.1 degrees in there probably because it's the farthest one that it's not getting the refrigerant but a lot of the cases are hot two degrees nine degrees that's too hot for frozen so when you're running your h10 you've got to let it warm up for like five minutes before it starts detecting leaks very well. I got tape on mine because this tip broke, but this still holds the air. It's a good seal. You can tell that it's got a good seal if when you put your finger on the tip and you let go, the ball jumps up. See? That means it's working good. You got good airflow. And you'll know that you're your uh, sensor is warmed up when you go across this here and it starts going off 
they ain't doing it yet. Also manual mode, you put it up from auto to manual and you can adjust this dial and set it where it needs to be. Once it's fully warmed up, this will stop speeding up too, but it's more sensitive in manual mode and it works better for smaller leaks. Really go. It still needs to warm up some, but it finds it there. Let's see. Make sure it's working. Okay. You guys see that it's working. Check this out. That is a leak. There is a big leak in there. And we're going to have to find it. So, I'm going to move it over to medium. So, on medium, it still goes off just as bad. Let's put it on large. Not quite as bad, but still picks it up. Alright, so I want to walk in the walk-in freezer also. So I put it back on small, calibrated it. Alright, so I'm just going to walk around all the cases that say A on them for rack A and make sure I don't have any leaks elsewhere. Go over here in bakery. This is what it sounds like when there's no leak. This is what it sounds like when there's a little bit of a leak. Speeds up just a little bit, but not really very much to detect anything. All right, so one more time, A4, just for shits and giggles. Oh yeah. Okay, that's how you find a leak with the H10. Okay, got to take this one apart. Get the bottom panels out. It's nice they already had it empty for me. All right, so in here somewhere is my leak. So I'm gonna stop the ice from from flowing. So instead of cutting off liquid line pressure, I'm going to cut off the suction line pressure so that my circuit stays full of pressure so I have an easier time finding my leak. No matter which one I do, closing one of them is going to stop the flow. So, close that one and take the rest of it apart. And I like to have plenty of room when I work, so I move all the shelves up. Take out these bottom drills. Okay, so I have found a leak. It's on the expansion valve end cap right there. So sometimes instead of using a mirror, I think I use my phone to uh, see those leaks that are hard to find. There's gotta be another one somewhere. Or more than one, maybe more than two. I think there's several leaks because it lost all the refrigerant again in just a couple days. Okay, so we got one leak in A4. The, uh, when you get the cover off the cap, you can see it's just spewing out of there. this uh, sealant on it, I got it kind of all over the, the sealing surface. Alright, so now I'm in here at the walk-in, and let's see what we can find. Okay, so when you're spraying, you want to have a full bottle, mine's kind of not full, but you don't want to get air bubbles in the bottle. You want to be able to spray a smooth stream that doesn't have bubbles in it and you want to get everything saturated with this bubble spray try not to miss any spots and try not to create bubbles of your own 
by squeezing it too fast, too hard, because that can create some bubbles and make you think you have a leak if you actually don't. But you should never confirm a leak unless you actually see it bubbling, creating new bubbles. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you gotta be careful. So, I got this one covered with bubbles. And this, this only works like, see, if the fans were running, then I'd have bubbles coming from these little, from where the copper meets the metal. I would have, uh, I'd have bubbles forming there. But since the fans are not running, it's just pressure from inside the line going through there, so. Looks like something. You just, you, you look for your bubbles, and when you see a bubble, you, you look for it to see, look at it and see if it gets bigger. Or if another one pops out next to it and beside it. It'll kind of push, they'll kind of push each other to the side. They're not hard to spot when they're there. Definitely not hard to spot. But that's, you know, that's about it. Leak detection is not that hard. You just gotta, gotta look and know how to look. It kind of gets pretty easy. You got got a couple right there that's why I say you want to try not to spray your own bubbles on there because they'll fool you and make you think you got a leak if you really don't all right time I let those sit on there for a little bit check the other side all right here's my other side a bit more rusty over here this is the service side this is where the refrigerant lines come in and uh, you get the leaks on this side more times than not, but leaks can occur anywhere, so don't just think there's going to be over here. I'm still not seeing anything really too big. You get little. Let's see if I can focus on this. All right. So, whenever you get little, uh, like little areas of foam-looking stuff, pay close attention to those. Because see, if you notice up here, we don't have little little pockets of foam. But down here, on that one, we do. And really, really small leaks look like foam with this bubble solution so when you see little pockets of foam like that you want to uh, spray it and get rid of the foam and see if it reappears so I had foam on both of those a little bit on that bottom one Sometimes my, my eyes are starting to get bad, I guess from age or something, so I, I, I rely on my phone camera a lot to do the looking for me sometimes. also right up there where it meets the uh, metal sometimes when there's a leak so small like this you can actually see those little bubbles like that one that you see right there it'll change color like it'll uh, you'll see the bubble forming because like it'll shine at you and then that shine will like stop and you'll, you'll see it'll be like movement that's how you know a bubbles forming see these are very very small about the size of a needle. Can't even see it with my bare eye. Looks like I, I have a little bit of foam appearing. 
Not very much, though. See, these are microscopic leaks. Sometimes not enough to even really cause an issue. But if you can see them with your eye, that means they're major leaks. They're big leaks. That's why I gotta use my phone. like those bubbles fell from above somewhere. I cannot help but notice that this one right here just keeps growing foam. I keep noticing that. Make it disappear again and see what happens. I believe I see it. It does. It's very small, very microscopic. But it's foaming. It's leaking. Ah, there you can see the bubble forming. Crazy, huh? Look at that. crazy that my H10 leak detector can pick up on these things. Got foam occurring also. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Also right there. I think that one's smaller than the other one though. Yeah. Let's see. What is it? That one? Yeah, that's the one right there. That's the biggest microscopic leak we have here. And we got another one. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Right there. Got another one right there on that one behind it. Looks like we got one also right there. So this coil suffers from multiple pinhole type of... Uh, Evaporator leaks. This one has, I don't know if those are new bubbles or if those came from above. But that's how you wipe them out. That's how you wipe them bubbles out and see if they reappear. It takes a lot of patience sometimes. Like, who wants to sit here and do this all day, you know? But, if you do, you'll actually find the leaks. that one we were looking at a minute ago microscopic leak okay and then you got that one on the bottom all right 
see if I can show you what I was looking at here. Looks like right. Yeah, right there. Right there in the middle. We've got a little trail of foam. Yeah, a little trail of foam leading to slightly bigger bubbles, but that's a leak as well. There's little leaks all over this coil. And they'll worsen. Right now they're really not too bad, but uh, I have to identify a leak on this rack to be able to add refrigerant. More than one is better because it just lost a lot, so I'll probably condemn this coil and call that cooler down there fixed. Alright, so to determine how much refrigerant this thing takes, most of the time on these racks you can look and you see here it says receiver capacity 80% full, 55 pounds. We know that it's low because of how it's running here, sight glass. It's a lot of vapor actually. And then when we look at the computer, we go into refrigeration, rack A, receiver it's at 10.9 percent so we're going to add some r 448a and then after we add some we're going to come back here and see how high this has gone so we begin charging i'll take off this on the suction line take this off it's on there super tight Looks like somebody here recently changed out this uh, Schrader valve. Put your cap and your O-ring can fall out all the time, so don't ever try to pay attention. So get you some of these, right? Put it on there. It takes a little bit of practice, but let's get it right. You'll never go back to not doing it. Put the knees on, then take this and pull the, the valve stem out. Let's see if I got it. Probably not. Nope. Not too much pressure. Not too much pressure in here, but sometimes you can use it to shoot out the middle cap. You don't want to do that on a high pressure system. Though. So you take that out so that your uh, refrigerant goes in there faster because it's liquid, you know. So get your hose, take out the thing, whatever it's called. The valve cord depressor. Needle nose seems to work pretty good usually. There we go. Now it's going to flow. so we can purge the air out. And there we go. And in the refrigerant loop. Nope, hold on. There we go. Alright, we're gonna charge it up now. There, now in the refrigerant goes. 
Of course, you see this here is the fan delay temperature sensor. So I'm going to mount it back where it was. Right there. Okay, now the fans will start. If I plug it in. Alright, so after adding 25 and a half pounds, this looks like we have, looks like the vapor situation here is worse. That's a lot of vapor in the glass. We're going to the computer. Hmm, still says 10.9. That ain't no good, huh? So for comparison, rack D liquid level receiver is 42. Eh. Rack B receiver is at 54. And our receiver, rack A, is still at 10.9. Alright, so this system has to hold hundreds of pounds like I thought, so. That right there is a bunch of bullshit. Okay, so up here we are on top of the stove. And so we're looking at rack A, which is this one back here. And yeah, it's not at no 10.9%. It's, it's pegged out down below zero. If you look at rack B, you see the line right there. So, regarding how much refrigerant, it ain't gonna say, I don't think. But I'll tell you what, it ain't no damn 55 pounds. All right, so I need to drop that other jug I got and see if that makes a dent in the, in the rack. I don't know why none of these fans up here are running. I think one of the fans up here started, but damn it, it's like lost almost all the refrigerant. We've got low pressure on the discharge side so bad that it hadn't even it won't even start these fans we got that one that just started but that's real bad we have to look for some more leaks after get some more pressure in it so looking at rack a we're running discharge 189 psi one condenser fan motor on knows that okay okay so rack b 239 that's a little bit more normal what we want if we look if we look at if we look at rack b this is also a 448 unit and it's uh, something like that also but you can see the discharge pressure over here we're up at 237.4 on b rack b we're at 223 rack a is barely 188 so let's drop this other 25 pounds i got in there and see what happens Right, so I'm gonna add this and I'm gonna watch to see if it increases my pressure any. Nice to did, huh? Right now my gauge shows about 158. See if we can at least get a 10 pound rise, that'd be nice. A lot of the first thing these things take. About half the jug has gone in, it looks like we're sitting about 161 maybe. So we are getting some rising pressure, 162 now. 161, 162, that's good. Alright, so this jug's now empty. It looks like we got 152, 153. A little bit of a rise. Alright, now we'll go back up and see what happens. It'd be nice if these fans start up. That's uh, just only 50 pounds, so I'm gonna have to go get some refrigerant. All right, heading back now to see what the computer recognizes and see if we got more than one fan running. We should have a little bit higher pressure. On the computer, the computer was reading 188. All right, well at least the side glass, it looks a little different to me. I don't know if you can tell. You just look at these, you can tell. Hey, look, we got some ice. That's, that's a nice, it wasn't icing before. All right, so let's see. It says 189, 189.4. All right, see. Uh, okay. Still 10.9, so it's still down. I'm not able to recognize uh, any liquid, but our discharge is slowly going up. So I'm gonna run and grab refrigerant. It is Labor Day, so I'm gonna have to open them up. Hey, at least we got some head pressure building, that's good. Oh, 
looks to me like my fan's turned on in my A4 because it was at 69 a little bit ago. It's falling, look at that. So I bet when I walk down there, my fans are gonna be on. Yep. Also, A9 walk-in freezer, 36.8 is dropping. The fans are on in there too. Yep, just like I suspected, the fans are on in here. That's that's good. This is stuff. This will start getting colder. Well, I go get refrigerant. It's already dropped a little. They really needed to come on too. Everything was getting really hot. And ice cream is getting soft. So yes, my fans have been coming on. 62. It was 69 earlier. They come on and they warm the switch up and the switch shuts them back off after they after they warm up. They're gonna come on here in a second. So as the fans stop, then the refrigerant gets colder and colder and goes through all the different circuits and then it comes up to this last one here, right? Suction header, and it starts getting that switch cold. When it's this hot in here, as soon as those fans come on, it uh, it heats that back up and that switch opens and shuts the fans back off. That's normal operation. It's only normal because the system's low on the refrigerant right now, so I mean, that's the switch is doing what it's supposed to do, and there's nothing abnormal about that. And so the fans have started, just like I told you. So it'll bring it down some, and then they'll shut back off. And it might be a little hard to see, but you can see those front loops right there. They are they're 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 shiny. That means that the ice on them is melting. See that top loop right there in the corner? That one right in the middle of the screen right there? It is uh, the ice on it's disappearing because that hot air. It's hot. 62, 50, 60 degree air is hot for this system, so it uh, heats that switch back up and shuts them off. All right, got my four jugs, brand new refrigerant. All right, so I'm back at my case. We're at 44, and the fans are still cycling off, so still low. So there goes the third jug. This will put 75 pounds in it, and I'm hoping that after this, the fans will stay on. Alright, so I want y'all to see how small these leaks get. So this is just 3 quarter inch pipe and 3 inch pipe stuck together, welded together, and right here they, uh, towards the middle of the screen, we have tiny little bubbles forming. And then we also coming up from like the middle half of the screen up, bottom half up, right there in between the two lines. There's small tiny little streams. You can barely see them. And they're going being created there's multiple little microscopic leaks between these two pipes the biggest one kind of starts right there at the middle and then we've also got some starting right there and notice how on the bottom of the screen nothing is going that way so it's not like these bubbles are flowing from you know the bottom of the screen from that direction these are appearing from nowhere or they're coming from the pipe and you see how these bubbles are are becoming more so this is a, a very very microscopic leak but it is a leak nonetheless now i'm gonna try to get me a little bit of a turn on here i got my big pressure wrench on it i'm gonna try to get this one to turn a little more With 75 pounds, sorry, my discharge is up higher, around 200. That's almost where we need to be. Side glass is still flashing, but getting better. 75 pounds in, and the receiver is still showing 10.9. All right, this is the fourth jug for refrigerant going in. Started about 194 on the gauge. We're in 203 up at the computer. Things down to 31. Okay, finally my sight glass is clear after 100 pounds. I'm not yet seeing too much difference here yet. But, at least my four fans are running for rack A. That's, that's nice. 
and I believe I found a major leak on that cap. Get my bubbles and see. That's a massive leak. That could be where all that is where all the refrigerant is gone. You guys know why these do this, these king valves? They do this because somebody doesn't come in here and tighten these back down. See? Come on, man! Also, these up here on the rack, they don't go to nothing, but they are pressure release valves. So this has to be midway open. This can't be closed. So it's gotta be, gotta be in the middle, okay? See, it's where it turns, both directions, okay? Give it a little bit of a, after you get it hand tight, just a little bit, not, not, not too much, just a little bit. Enough to where it's good and tight. Yeah, I like it. Okay, it's taking 100 pounds and it's still showing zero, but we've got a clear side class now, so that means that all the liquid lines are full and now we can start filling the receiver. About damn time too. Okay, so it's got 100 pounds in it. It's down 11. Add another 25. Now, do keep in mind that if you wouldn't have taken out the straighter valve stem out of here and used this tool like I showed you earlier, it would take like 10 or 15 minutes to put one of these bottles in. Now, with this jug going in, the fifth one, my pressure's going up a lot more. Probably because the receiver is getting full now. So before, now, all of the liquid lines are all on all of these cases in here. I guess you can't see them from here. All of the rack A cases, they are just full of n n not liquid, a bunch of vapor and liquid. They obviously still had some liquid because they were still cooling, but not very much. Receiver just barely got full, or a full column of liquid after 100 pounds. All right, so this jug is empty, and we've got a boost of about 15 PSI. 125 pounds in and still not showing up. Here goes number six. Pressure's when we're starting. Number six, 205. All right, number six is empty. Push this up to 216. Okay, all right, now we finally got something. After 150 pounds, we finally got 10%. And we're registering on the computer, 20%. About time after, 100, after six jugs, 150 pounds, finally got something. All right, we've got 150 pounds in it, and we finally have a clear side glass. Finally showing a 20% liquid level. All right, so we're adding jug number seven now. Finally, we got A4 down to zero degrees. And we actually got some liquid flowing. Okay, 175 pounds have been added. My receiver's reading 31.2%. I think I'm gonna be good with that. I don't know what's going on with the A9. It's still at 28 degrees. All right, so looking here at A9, it seems, looks like uh, I looked at the back arc. All right, so looking here at A9, I looked at the back, and you can kind of see it from here, though. The evaporator is like just mostly ice. Air can barely get through it, so it needs to go into defrost, so. I'm pretty sure once it recovers from defrost and air can get through it and air can touch the metal fins that it'll it'll bring the temperature. It's already brought the temperature down in here, but uh, and everything in here is, is hot and it's full, it's like packed full. So anyways, that's gonna do it, I think, on this video. Hope, I know it's long enough, sorry about that. Hope you guys enjoyed it, got something out of it. Catch you next time. Alright, so in closing here, I'm gonna take my valve stem. 
install it. your cap and put it back the way it was good and tight just like that a4 is back together and holding temp the a7 the one that was at 22 earlier is at negative 7 ice cream is not soft anymore